Ask yourself again, if you are in a simulation, how many layers deep might you be right now? I want to share something intriguing that I've built in the shop, a setup that's not just interesting technically, but makes for a pretty powerful analogy about reality itself. This is my PDP 1134 from 1974. I finally completed its restoration and it's humming along nicely. Let's have a look at the terminal. Now you're looking at classic RT11, an operating system from the golden era of computing. But here's the twist. This PDP that you're actually looking at now isn't real hardware at all. It's simulated, purely software based, a digital illusion. Yet as far as it can tell, it's completely authentic. It has no clue that its reality is completely virtual. That PDP-11 believes wholeheartedly it's living in its own tangible universe, blissfully unaware that its existence is running entirely within a simulation hosted on another legendary machine, a DEC VAX 4000. Now the VAX has the horsepower to simulate the PDP so effectively that it's indistinguishable from the real thing. But here's the twist. That DEC VAX itself isn't real hardware either. Instead, it's another digital phantom running comfortably inside SimH, a software emulator hosted on the NetBSD 10.1 operating system. Now, as you might have guessed, what NetBSD itself doesn't know is that it's also simulated. That instance of NetBSD is actually nestled inside a QEMU emulator, yet another digital layer removed from reality. But why stop there? Because even QEMU doesn't get off so easy. Because it's running within a virtual machine managed by Proxmox virtualization software, which is itself organizing multiple virtual worlds, each one confident in its own independent reality. Finally, we reach solid ground, maybe. Proxmox runs on real hardware, a 45 drive Storinator featuring 128 epic cores and a terabyte of RAM. This is the base reality, or so we presume. Amazingly, even stacked five simulations deep, the performance inside this digital nesting doll mimics that of my physical vintage PDP 1134. Directory listings, text scrolling, they all feel authentic and smooth, genuinely indistinguishable from the real thing. It just takes a million times the computing power to achieve it, but ironically, it only uses a tiny fraction of the electricity that the real system would have consumed. This setup is more than just a curious technical feat. It's an analogy for a deeper existential question. Could your reality also be a simulation layered deep inside countless others, each reality oblivious to those above and around it? The idea of living in a simulated universe isn't new. It's captivated imagination since at least 2003 when philosopher Nick Bostrom posed his now famous simulation argument. Put simply, he suggested that if humanity ever becomes capable of creating convincingly real simulated universes, then logically, simulated worlds would vastly outnumber real ones. By pure statistics then, we would probably already be living in one. Now if that sounds far-fetched, consider how rapidly computing power has accelerated. Back when the PDP was new, running even one realistic simulation would have seemed ludicrous. Imagine what civilizations thousands or even millions of years more advanced might achieve. Still skeptical? Well, think about the limits of our human perception. Our senses easily fool us. Optical illusions deceive our vision. Audio illusions trick our ears. Dreams immerse us in entirely fabricated worlds every night. Virtual reality technology already shows that our brains readily accept digital universes as real experiences. Is it really so impossible that we're living inside another kind of digital illusion right now, crafted by something vastly more advanced? And that brings us to physics itself. Quantum mechanics, with its bizarre behaviors, raises curious questions. At microscopic scales, particles almost behave like digital entities, existing in superposition states until observed, almost as if the simulation saves a lot of processing power by not rendering details until absolutely necessary, like when you look. Then there's the Planck length, the smallest measurable unit of space. Could this be analogous to pixelization or the resolution limit of our universe? It's another hint that we're living within digital confines. Well, a few months ago, I got curious and I did an experiment. If you wanted to represent any arbitrary position in our universe with an accuracy down to the Planck length, but capable of scaling out to any distance that our known universe scales over, how many bits of precision would you actually need? Well, I worked it out a couple of different ways and both times I got 63 bits. Suspicious. Does that mean that our simulation is running on vintage 64-bit hardware? Well, consider also glitches in software when your computer freezes, crashes, or displays graphical errors. If our universe were a simulation, might we occasionally detect similar glitches or inconsistencies? You saw it in the Matrix, like could a phenomenon like deja vu or the Mandela effect, collective false memories shared by large groups, be subtle indicators of programmer's oversight or a momentary hiccup? Now, suppose we one day uncover undeniable evidence, some cosmic Easter egg or an impossible mathematical anomaly proving that we're inside of a simulation. 
How would humanity react? Panic and fear? Religious reverence to the programmers above? Maybe curiosity and excitement at discovering that there's an even larger reality beyond our perception. Well, if it turns out that we are simulated, profound ethical questions do arise. Would our actions carry more weight, less weight, same amount? After all, if someone designed our universe with intention, wouldn't our existence hold deliberate and profound significance? Or, and this is where I tend to come out on things, if the simulation is indistinguishable from reality, are you morally obligated to treat it as such as long as there's any doubt? After all, in a universe where everybody is an NPC but you, what's the point? And that's where Pascal's wager sort of comes in. You've no doubt heard of it by now. Pascal postulated that even if the chances that a god exists are infinitesimally small, the rewards are infinite, so it's a solid money bet. But the paradox in that one is just that it doesn't just apply to your god, because the smart bet would then to believe in all the gods, just to be on the safe side. And so it is for other people. When you simply cannot know who's an NPC and who's real, you have to respect everybody's existence, just in case. Now let's go deeper still. What if each simulated universe inevitably develops its own ability to create new simulations? If so, reality quickly spirals into an infinitely recursive fractal, a mirror reflecting itself endlessly. This infinite regress of simulated realities creates an unimaginable complexity. Every simulated universe could spawn countless others, creating a hierarchy so deep that we might be impossibly far from any genuine fundamental reality. Some futurists even view simulation as a path to immortality. Imagine transferring your human consciousness, memories, personality, emotions, everything, into a simulated universe. Suddenly, death itself could be sidestepped. In such a scenario, would people willingly choose simulated life over physical reality? Would there even be a meaningful difference? Perhaps the ultimate realization in all of this is that the boundaries between simulated and real might themselves be illusions. Reality, whether digital or physical, feels genuine because we experience it directly. If we cannot distinguish a simulation from reality, maybe the distinction itself loses importance entirely. So let's circle back. So far, I've demonstrated how easy it is to stack simulations on simulations nestled neatly within each other, each convinced of its own authenticity. And while this might seem all purely hypothetical, technology today is proving otherwise. Even as a hobbyist experiment, this multi-layered digital nesting is seamless, fast, and shockingly believable. Ask yourself again, if you are in a simulation, how many layers deep might you be right now? Are you close to the existing hardware reality? Or are you lost far down the recursive rabbit hole trapped inside infinite nested simulations, each crafting their own virtual worlds, each unaware of the other's existence? It's a question we will probably never fully answer. But exploring it fosters wonder, curiosity, and humility. It reminds us that reality, however you define it, is far more mysterious and fascinating than we usually stop to think about. Whether or not we live inside somebody else's digital creation, our experience remains authentic, meaningful, and full of discovery. Maybe the greatest joy isn't in solving the mystery, but simply marveling at how beautifully strange existence, simulated or real, actually is. If you enjoyed today's little exploration of simulation theory, remember that I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so I'd be honored if you'd consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. And if you've got thoughts on the matter, please leave them in the video comments and we'll answer the best of them every Friday on our Shop Talk podcast. Link in the video description. Check it out. Thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. In the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage. This little chair will be waiting for one of you and a rocking chair for another who likes to rock, and a big armchair for two to curl up in. All next time on Dave's Garage.